last season I made a video about using a little chainsaw like this and sticking a box on the side of it and using it to mill lumber. As it turns out, the video was wildly popular and this thing has been pretty effective. In fact, I've refined my technique such that I'm producing nearly flawless, ready-to-plane boards right out of the gate. So this video will just kind of be a short update to help you refine your technique if you've tried this. The saw I seem to favor is this MS-170. I've tried it with uh, the 250. It, it's heavier and it makes a wider kerf. And it, as it turns out, this technique just works better with a little chainsaw like this. So I'm going to show you a, just a, a real quick what I do. This one is a maple, let's say eight inches or so thick, and I think eight feet long. This one here is a cherry, and it was, I think, six or seven, probably six and a half feet long, and just a, not quite as thick. I've already turned most of that into boards, and that's when I decided to make the follow-up video because it's working so well. Uh, this is going to give me a little more trouble. Maple is tough stuff, but never mind that. The point here is really about technique. The idea is first you want to get a flat spot on the top and bottom, and how I do that, honestly, I just use a chalk line and strike a line on the log and then I freehand it. I just freehand cut. It's a great way to practice. You end up with these slab things, um, but practicing your uh, freehand skills is a useful skill that can transfer to other places and it's a great excuse to do it. Once you get a rough flat spot like this, then you can mill the rest of this vertically just by taking slices of it away. The benefits to doing this, you're not going through bark on the top or bottom on your finished boards and you, the lessened thickness makes it really just go quickly and easily. In each pass you want to take about two inches so if you have a six inch thick log you'll take three light passes. The chainsaw doesn't bog down, the um, chain doesn't go dull, you don't use much gas, and you don't struggle. But I made an even better refinement in this case. Check this out. So I hope you've seen the how to make this video already or else this won't make any sense to you. But what these are, it's just a big long three and a half inch screw located at two inches in from the end and one and an eighth of an inch from the side and that's the center of this screw. These are just hole saw cutouts from three-quarter inch plywood. There are three of them. They're glued together and you screw right through the pilot. It makes a really nice stable thingy. And then five pounds of weight on each side gives it ten pounds which offsets the weight of the saw. This counterbalance makes it such that you can just let the tool do the work and it works awesome. We'll jump right into some footage so I can prove to you that it works in just a moment, but a few other points. I would like to um, volley back to all the commenters who said, use paste wax. Uh, it's really not necessary. I used white bar soap in the last video and I didn't mention it, and everybody seems to think that you can lessen the friction by using some type of um, paste wax. It really doesn't matter. The speed at which this is going makes it so that if you want to use wax, go ahead, but you're really not dealing with tons of friction here. And honestly, it's probably not worth doing just because all of the stuff that ends up inside of it would probably just clog it up anyways. Long story short, my experiment started by using soap as a lubricant and then I just stopped altogether. It's not worth it. Another point, use clamps whenever possible. There's really no sense in putting screw holes into your what's going to be your finished wood if you don't have to. So in this case, this log, I should be able to do the entire thing without putting a single screw hole in it. That's because, as I've already mentioned, I freehand a 
free handed a flat spot on the top and bottom and then I do the slice method and when I'm doing the slices it's all clamp work. You can start with just two clamps, one on each end and you'll be able to chainsaw right to the last foot at which time you'll have to take this clamp off, put it here and then you can just finish off the end. I'll show you. As it sits right now I've just taken a board away and before I forget to tell you I suggest that you, you, you practice a few times without using the weights first, just so that you understand the physics of this thing. But using the weights is wonderful. I can leave it sitting here in this position and walk away, which is a nice feature. But um, to begin with, your first cut will be about yay deep, about two inches. Then second cut will be like so. And then third cut try to optimize and keep it right around whatever it takes to drop it away. You'll be able to see through the gap and if you can see light then your depth is appropriate. The advantage to using this one, two, three technique is that when the chainsaw runs this way with the grain, you're pulling nice big healthy sh long shreds out as opposed to that sawdusty sort of stuff that shows you that the cutting is not as efficient. And so your first two inches will be, it will just flow like it cuts like butter. The second, eh, not as good. And then the third, definitely not as good. But when I first started doing this, I thought that running it around 45 degrees would be ideal, but that's not the case. It seems to be that the lower it is, the more parallel with the grain it is, and thus the better it cuts. we want to set the two by four back from the edge two and three eighths of an inch. Doing so will give us a finished cut that's about an inch rough cut material. And that's assuming that you've built this jig to the specifications in the other video. Two and three eighths. And while we're here, take a moment to appreciate how straight that is. Not bad at all. If you can believe it, the ones that I did off camera were even better. It's rough to operate two cameras and do this at the same time. But trust me when I say that with the weights, it's quite a refinement. You can really produce some nice looking material here. Results. Here's what I got out of the cherry log. And I also got that one piece of maple. So these are six inches thick. The texture is reasonably consistent the whole way down. I had pretty good luck with the process this time.
with this session alone, I've virtually paid for a new chainsaw. I didn't do so well with this first piece of maple. Uh, one side is pretty nice, it's about nine and a half inches in width, but look what happened on the back. Note that I didn't sharpen my chain yet, so all of this was without sharpening a chain. And it started to dig here, and I wrote it out. I can plane this out, but I'm going to lose probably three sixteenths of the thickness of the board. So in conclusion, if, especially if you're going to do maple, which is the most, the least forgiving of the woods that I found, don't go more than six inches. This jig is just not appropriate for widths more than six inches. Six is about ideal. Eight is pushing it. Something like nine and a half. It's kind of unrealistic. But for this six inch stuff, uh, this process is great. It works wonderfully. That's a nice pile of wood for not all that much work. And one last tip before you go. Make sure that your rail, your guide board, is at least 12 inches longer than the stock that you're milling. It needs to stick over so that the jig can run off the end. If you don't, you end up with this sort of switch mark and it's really tough to avoid. It'd just be better if you just had one continuous non-stop track. Okay, thanks a lot for joining me. Hope this was useful. Here it is, your moment of zen. I have a bad case of diarrhea.